Welcome to Teacher and Zion Podcast. Today's episode is entitled, Do You Want to Fight Satan? Let me begin today by sharing an experience that I had in the late 90s, uh, which not only fits with the topic today, but it is also a good lesson to share so that hopefully someone out there uh, doesn't have to learn the same lesson the hard way, the way that I did. At one time, when I was in my late 20s and had been a teacher in my church congregation for maybe a year, our home church congregation in Michigan had grown greatly over the years in the number of people who attended there. And it was during this time that a great and contentious argument arose over the word of wisdom, in particular whether or not coffee should be served in church. As a side note, the cure for the word of wisdom in making it some kind of commandment or a litmus test for spirituality is found in the book of Galatians. I recommend that you read the whole book from beginning to end. But in any case, the people in the congregation were sharply divided to the point that some people had actually left and others were threatening to do so. As a teacher, there was just one short blurb in our manual about what the ministry of a teacher is. And it basically says that they are to keep peace in the church and ensure that there's no iniquity. And so, as you can imagine, I was feeling rather like a failure in this regard. The other men who served there in offices of ministry were also divided. I eventually started to see that both sides were ultimately wrong because the issue was not being handled in love. But as I helplessly watched the devil cause havoc with the congregation, and with people that I truly cared about, I became frustrated and, in fact, I became angry. Though I was married this one particular evening, my wife was not at home. I was in the living room stewing over what Satan was doing, realizing that both sides were being played and seeming to be helpless to stop it. I became so upset that I shouted, out loud in anger, directing my words and my anger at the devil. I demanded that he leave the congregation alone and that if he wanted a fight, to fight me instead. Almost immediately, there was a presence that appeared standing on the far side of the living room from where I was. It wasn't a person, but rather a shadow. I could feel a presence of intense hatred and evil. Somehow I knew this being was powerful, capable of throwing me right through my living room wall. And fortunately for me, I was now also aware of the very presence of the Lord who stood just behind me. I could sense that he was protecting me from this dark entity. The Lord then spoke into my mind in that still small voice. And he said, if you want to fight him that way, you'll have to do it on your own. Understanding that I had made a serious error in judgment, I told the Lord, no, Lord, I now see that this is not the right way to handle it. I want to do it your way. The shadow presence then vanished. Saturday night, just a couple of weeks ago, as I crawled into bed, turned out the light and closed my eyes, the Holy Spirit spoke into my mind and my heart, and fearing that I might forget what was shared if I waited until morning, I picked up my phone from the nightstand, put on my reading glasses, 
and did my best to write what I had received. While some very specific words were impressed upon me, the experience was an instant download where an understanding was placed in my heart. Therefore, I would not categorize what I'm about to share with you as a thus saith the Lord. And I cannot claim that every single word I'm about to share is precisely God's exact words. As I said, this experience was a near instant download. So I did my best to jot down what I understood from this communication. And therefore, please feel free to pray about it and accept or reject anything that is shared. And having said that, I do believe I have captured the essence of what he communicated in my spirit. And this is the essence of what the Lord shared with me. Those who would follow me should not spend their energy pointing out what is wrong, stomping their feet in protest, organizing politically, or even fighting against Satan and his army. Too often, what many call spiritual warfare amounts to much sound and fury, signifying nothing. Rather, seek first to build up the kingdom of God, and by doing so, let my light within you shine. My children, you are called to be a light to the world, a city set on a hill. Let my light even the love of the Father, shine out from within yourselves and into this world. When you come across a darkened room, you do not get a bucket to scoop up the darkness and carry it out. Rather, you turn on the light switch, and the darkness is vanquished. I have made the way simple, but those who are called by my name tend to complicate it. Learn to love all people ask me to help you love, even those you think of as your enemies. Those who refuse to walk this path and seek excuse refuse my gospel and cannot be conformed to my image. For it is through my love that the very powers of heaven will be unleashed on earth. Believe in me. Believe my words contained in the scriptures, but especially my gospel and my doctrine, which I delivered to my disciples. Begin to walk in and live my gospel each day. Begin by taking small steps, even the steps of a child in faith. And soon you will see changes begin to take place in your heart. For I have sent my Holy Spirit, to help you. And it is by my Spirit that all things are possible. Walk by faith rather than by sight. Speak my words according to the direction of the Holy Spirit, for they are life. Abide in me, and I will abide in you. By this means you will heal the sick and set the captives free. And this is what Satan fears most, that you will do what I have called you to do, what I have made possible for you to do. This is what causes the demons to tremble and the kingdom of the devil to shake. Amen.